Hi, good morning. I am Dr. Varun Vij. I am Associate Consultant in Neonatology and Pediatrics Department at Indraprastha Apollo Hospital, Sarita Viha. And today I will be talking about the care of the newborn at homes, do's and don'ts related to it. So congratulations, you have brought your little bundle of joy home. You all will be very happy about him. You have made it through the pain and excitement of the labor and the delivery and now you are ready to begin your life with the baby. Thou taking care of the newborn can be the most special and rewarding experience of life but sometimes one may feel at a loss for what to do to give the best for the baby. So I will be giving you some tips which will help the most nervous first time parents feel comfortable about the care of the newborn baby. So first and the foremost thing, always consider getting help. Help can be anyone in the hospital or at home. At hospital, you can talk to the experts, you can talk to us, the nurses, there are lactation caregivers and feeding specialists in certain hospitals. You can always look upon them and get help. At home, you can take help of your relatives, grandparents, your husband, your friends who have just given birth to the baby or you can even hire a nurse. But one thing that is important is that do not blindly follow anyone and do not let them make you feel anxious. So help can be anyone whether they are grandparents, whether they are doctors, sisters or anyone who, whom you feel close to. Sometimes especially for the first time parents, the handling of the newborn may be quite intimidating. But it is not like that. So you just have to remember the basics. Always wash your hands and use a hand sanitizer before touching your baby. Your baby is very small, they do not have a strong immune response and so are susceptible to infections. While carrying your baby, always support your baby's head and neck. Always cradle the baby when carrying him and support the head while making him lie down. This is very important. Do not shake your newborn whether in play or in frustration. Their vessels are very fragile. They can have intraventricular bleed. So always remember that your bleed baby is not ready for rough play such as being thrown in the air. Other thing is do not hesitate to pick your child up when they cry. It is most important for a baby to have a feeling of security after birth and crying is often a signal that they need something. Do not think that if you will handle your baby or if you will pick up your baby each and every time the baby will cry, they will be having a habit of that. Do not worry about disciplining the baby at this stage. You can discipline it at a later age after one year, two year whole life is there to discipline your baby. But at this point of time, always pick up your child when they cry. They can only commute to us through crying. So always listen to their cry. Now the most important thing in caring of a newborn baby is breastfeeding. So breastfeed your baby as soon as possible. You can breastfeed your baby in the delivery room or once you are shifted to the room after the delivery, you can start with the breastfeeding. The first milk is one of the best thing which we can give to the newborn. The first milk also known as colostrum is very important for the baby. It protects the child from diseases as it aids in the development of newborn immune system. It is also rich in vitamins like vitamin K and A which further help in the growth of the baby. And there is no artificial feed that can substitute the first milk with all the natural benefits and therefore it should always be fed to the child after the birth. A newborn baby needs to be fed every 2 to 3 hours and always give your baby at least 10 to 15 minutes to nurse on one side of the breast. A good way to tell if your baby is getting enough milk is to notice if your breast is full before the feeding and it is less full after the feeding. Also if the baby is feeding well, then the baby will pass urine at least 6 to 7 times during the daytime 
and four to five times during the night time. So these are the rough methods by which we can estimate that the baby is getting enough milk. You can breastfeed your baby in any position in which you are comfortable. You can breastfeed your baby while lying down, while sitting, while the baby is in a side, in any position in which you can breastfeed and you are comfortable, you can just feed the baby. The important point is that the position of the baby at the breast should be correct. So the correct position will be that the baby's mouth should take as much as areola inside. Areola is the portion that is below the nipple. So it should not be visible while the baby is sucking and the chin of the baby should be touching the mother's breast. So I have shown here the positions in which the baby's mouth should be open and should take the areola, at least two third of the areola inside the mouth. You can also see that while sucking the cheeks are full and there might be some drops of milk which might be coming down through the angle of the mouth. So this is a good latching position. So the, in our country there are lots of myth which are associated with breastfeeding. First and foremost sugar water on honey are given in most of the families before the breastfeed. However, they are very harmful for a baby. It is a very unhealthy practice and it may cause serious infection to your baby. So you should remember that nothing is to be given to the baby except breast milk for at least first six months. The other myth is that mother cannot feed the baby is if she is having some infection like cough, cold or fever. Well, breastfeeding should not be stopped if the mother has an infection. In fact, breastfeeding is unlikely to pass the infection. Rather, it will pass antibodies to the baby that will help the baby fight the infection and get better faster. The other myth is during the summers, baby need water in addition to the breastfeeds. So again, it should not be followed. For first six months, only breastfeed should be given. Breast milk is rich in water, so the breastfeed babies do not need additional water. Then regarding the care of the breast and the nipple while during the breastfeeding, the common myth is that each time you should breastfeed, you should wash your nipples with soap and plenty of water. Well, washing the nipple makes the area dry and remove all the nature, naturally protective oils from it and use of soap should be avoided around the nipple. However, the hind milk that is the milk which comes at the end of the breastfeed and is rich in the fat can be applied over the nipple to keep the nipple moist and hydrated. Also it prevents the soreness which occur after the breastfeeding. The other myth is that the amount of the milk secreted by the lactating mother it depends upon the size of the breast. Size of the breast has got nothing to do with the milk output. Milk production in the lactating mother depends upon the demand of the milk from the baby rather than the size of the breast. So like any other condition, it is always about demand and supply. The more the baby will demand, the more will be the supply from the breast. The other thing which most mothers complain is that whenever the baby is crying excessively, we just give breast milk. However, again this is a myth. Excessive cry does not mean that you have an in inadequate milk output. There may be several amount of reasons like the baby is crying excessively. The baby just wants to pick, just wants you to pick him up or he just wants you to tell that he has soiled his diaper. So just change the diaper. There are plenty of reasons that the baby is crying. So it does not always mean that there is inadequate milk. So after breast milk, it is always a necessity to give burp to your baby. Babies often swallow air during feeding which can make them fussy. Their abdomen get distended and this can be one of the reasons that the baby is crying excessively. We can prevent this by burping 
after feeds frequently. The position of the burping can be any in which you are comfortable. Hold your baby upright with his or her head on your shoulder. Support your baby's head and the back while gently patting the back with your other hand. You can continue doing this for 5 to 10 minutes after the breast feeds. The other position is that lay your baby face down on your lap. Support your baby's head making sure it is higher than his or her chest and gently pat the back or rub his back. These positions are ideal for burping. The other common questions which we commonly encounter is how to bathe your baby. As handling a newborn can be very intimidating, so can be bathing. However, it can be made very simple. For first 7 to 10 days, when the umbilical cord has not fallen yet, give your baby only a sponge bath. Once the umbilical cord has fallen off, you can give a complete bath to your baby. You can bathe your baby at least twice or thrice in a week for first one month or so. However, always collect your prerequisites for the bathing before you take your baby into the bathing area. You should collect the towel, washcloth, cotton wall, new nappy and the clean coats. Make sure that the room is comfortable and is warm and test the water temperature with your wrist or the elbow. It should not be very hot. Once the bath is ready, undress your baby, cradle her head and the shoulder with one hand and support the body with the other. Gently lower her into the bath. Generally, no soap or shampoo is needed for the first month. Baby skin is very fragile. Soap and shampoo can alter the microorganisms over the skin. So these are not recommended at least for the first month. The umbilical cord, which was your baby's lifeline when he was in your womb, the baby no longer needs it, but the care of the umbilical cord is very necessary. One can swab the area with the alcohol swab until the cord stump dries up and falls up which usually occurs in 10 days or 3 weeks. Or they can just leave the area alone and clean it with sterile water with the cotton swab. An infant's navel area should not be submerged in the water until the cord stem falls off and the area is healed and dry. So this will take care of the umbilical cord. Now the diaper, the do's and the don'ts which are associated with the diapering. One can either use the cotton cloth nappy or they can use the diaper which are readily available in the market. So when to change the diaper? So after each bowel movement, the diaper is to be used. However, if the diaper is only wet and the baby has not passed shoes, then the diaper can be changed after every three to four hours. Always remember to wash your hands thoroughly after changing a diaper. The common entity which is related with the diaper is diaper rash. To prevent or heal the diaper rash, change your baby's diaper frequently and as soon as possible after the bowel movements. After, the cleaning, after cleaning the area with wet wipes or with mild soap or water, apply a diaper rash cream which generally contains zinc oxide as they form a barrier against the moisture. Also give your baby a diaper free hours in the day. This give a skin to chance to air out. You can give diaper free hours during the daytime and while the baby is going to sleep during the night time, you can apply the diapers again. So this will take care of the diaper rash. What about the sleeping? Most of the parents of the newborn, they are always hassled about the newborn's sleep. A newborn typically sleeps 
about 16 to 18 hours in a day. However, they always need nourishment every 3 to 4 hours and should be awakened up. While putting the baby on the sleep, put the baby on his back. This will reduce the risk of SIDS, that is sudden infant death syndrome. Also, it is very important to remove all the fancy and fluffy clothes, blankets, quilts, stuffed toys and pillows from the crib to ensure that your baby does not get tangled in them or suffocate himself. So it is very necessary to get rid of all these fancy items from the baby's cot. So what are the other common issues which you face? Because parents tend to panic at the slightest change in the bundle of joy, but there is always seldom any need to worry. So I am listing some common problems which the baby may face in the first three months. Colic. Sometimes the baby cry excessively and incessantly for hours, especially during the evening hours. Sometimes the baby has swallowed some air during his feed. So this can lead to abnormal distension and can lead to colic. For the relief, hold the baby in the burping position. Do not give any medication, especially gripe water. There is no need of giving those medications. The burping will take care of the colic. Wet eyes. Sometimes the eyes of the baby who are few days old, they may look constantly wet and are full of tears. It is because their nasolacrimal duct can be blocked. So this is the nasolacrimal duct. So, always gently massage over the inner, inner angle of the eye near its junction with the nose twice or thrice in a day. This will clear the blocked passages of the eyes. Sometimes there is a persistent clear or thick yellowish discharge. So, to clean the eyes, take two cotton swabs, soak it with lukewarm water and with two different swabs, clean the eyes. It should always be from the inner direction towards the outer. Cradle cap. Babies often have white or yellowish crust on the scalp that cannot be removed easily. However, these lesions are harmless. Washing your baby's head regularly and limiting the use of oil will cure him of this condition. Sometimes there is slight trickle of milk from the side of the mouth after the feed. It is very common, especially in term well-fed babies. So do not worry about it. They regurgitate some amount of milk. Just wipe it off and give burping. Jaundice, again a very common issue. Jaundice is a yellowish coloration of the baby's eye and the skin. It generally occurs on day 3 and day 4 of life and reaches its peak to day 5 and day 6. However, if it still persists significantly beyond the two weeks, then just consult your doctor. So what are the strict no's? Some newborns, they may have swollen breast that subside on their own after few weeks. However, pressing the breast to squeeze the milk out of them is a very dangerous process and should never be done. It can lead to the infection of the breast, of the chest, also can lead to the abscess formation, so should never be done. Do not try to push the foreskin of a male child penis to separate it from the soft front portion. It is always a protective mechanism. It is meant to protect the delicate part of the penis that is the glands. So do not push it. Also do not put oil into the ears and the nostrils. The oil, if aspirated into the lungs, can be very dangerous for the babies. There is no need to clean the tongue and the mouth of the baby. No need to clean them after the feeds or before the feeds. Also, avoid pacifiers because they interfere with the proper feeding habit and also increase the risk of the infections, including the middle ear infection and also causes malocclusion of the teeth. The wax which is normally found in the inner canal, it protects it. 
do not try to remove it from the use of the earbuds and also do not blow into the baby's ear after bath it can cause damage to the tympanic membrane and cause effect to the hearing process also take care of the baby's eyes never use surma or kajal for the baby's eyes some of these preparation contain lead which can be extremely dangerous for the baby so in the end as it is rightly said that of all the rights of the woman the greatest is to be the mother so enjoy your motherhood and take care of your baby thank you